DNA fingerprinting can also be used in criminal justice settings. Let's imagine a scenario where there is a certain sample of evidence of cells which have been gathered from a crime scene. So these might be skin cells, they might be blood cells. The sample might represent semen from a case involving rape. And once one performs DNA fingerprinting on the sample, one can determine what fragments of DNA were present in these cells of interest. If there are a number of potential suspects, which the criminal justice system is attempting to uh, link to this sample, then one can then perform DNA fingerprints on their cells as well, and one can compare the patterns which one uh, observes and link uh, the evidence to a specific individual. Now, a couple of things should be emphasized. One, while this may prove culpability and show who committed a crime, it is also a very powerful tool to uh, show who did not commit a crime. The first time that DNA fingerprinting was used and uh, one of its frequent uh, uses is to exonerate individuals who have been convicted of crimes by juries. So all types of evidence are you know, potentially fallible. And there have been individuals who have been wrongly convicted of crimes. And DNA fingerprinting can exonerate them and show, no, this wasn't this person's blood or skin or semen or whatever uh, involved in the crime. And while it may show a link to a specific individual, it does not necessarily show that this individual committed a crime. It simply shows that their cells were at the crime scene. And so therefore, you know, as we look at the various explanations and scenarios which may have played out, um, this individual has to explain why, you know, they were at the crime scene. They can be then linked to it. So this is a very powerful tool in criminal justice cases.